what some of you are thinking, right? You're thinking, hey, this is a game designer. He can get me a job at Rockstar Games. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm here really to tell you about a different sort of game. And I'm really to talk to people who are maybe not so interested in video games, who are a little bored sometimes with video games. Um, maybe you, you feel like sometimes they just don't feel uh, like you're accomplishing much, like they're kind of a waste of time, um, like you're not learning anything. Um, Sorry, had a brain freeze. <laughs> all right, all right. You guys are great. Yeah, so sometimes when I look at games today, uh, it's like we invented the movie camera, right? We, ha we can make these great, fabulous experiences, but yet the movies that we choose to make are almost always the ones that have an awful lot of shooting in them. So I make games which are different than that. Um, games which don't, which don't have a lot of shooting. Um, and I pressed the wrong button. Boy, I haven't gone off to a good start. <laughs> Doing all right? Doing all right? All right. So imagine that there's an oil crisis. We're in our next oil crisis. Um, so it's the end of cheap oil. And I don't know if you know this, but that means that uh, it's hard for us to get around, it's hard for us to get food. Um, all sorts of things happen, right, when, uh, when oil starts to run short. And uh, imagine the first thing that you want to do is you want to get a, a handle on what's going on. So you create a website where people send in their reports about what is happening with them. So you have an idea about what's going on. So if people are losing their jobs or if people are going hungry or if there's rationing going on, you learn about all of those things. And then the stories continue. So like if the, uh, if the transit systems start to fail, if, if airlines go belly up, if, if there's, there's the end of tourism and that sort of thing. And then when people start to develop solutions, like they start to learn how to garden, you know, or they start to share information about how to fix bikes and how to, to um, uh, get themselves around and cooperate on things. Now imagine that you have a whole bunch of people doing that. So you have reports like this from all over the world. Imagine what sort of story is being told by all of those reports. It's this really amazing story about our next oil crisis. I believe that games are the key to change. Um, now I know that change is not really a big deal for you folks right now. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but neuroscience says your brains are all in the midst of this uh, amazing change right now. It happens you know, when you're a teenager. But you may have noticed that change is harder for people uh, as they get older. So games are a way, essentially, to um, experience things in a realistic way without actually having to go through them. Uh, you can play it before you <coughs> live it. So the games I work on are called alternate reality games. So World Without Oil was an alternate reality game. And so one of the things about an alternate reality game is that it's not in the computer as much as it's a game which comes out and is in the real world. So it's a way of looking at the world. It's like laying this game layer right over everything. So imagine if you're playing World Without Oil and you're walking along and you just see on the street that there are some people who are pushing a car. You take out your cell phone, you take a picture, you send that into World Without Oil, and you say, ever since gas rationing started, I see this sort of thing more and more often. And that's, that's the way, essentially, that you play the game. It's this sort of immersive play which creates that sort of reality, which means that you can kind of rewire your brain. So I want to play a, another game uh, with you guys today a game called Pollyanna Jetpack. So imagine ama this amazing thing has happened, right? I mean, all of those things that we once kind of thought were going to happen, you know, the anti-gravity boots and uh, the, the personal jetpack, all that sort of thing, those things are actually going to be happening really soon. 
And the people who are developing those things are not going to give them to the person who has the most money. They are going to give them to the people who can do the most good. And so that means that you qualify. And so I want you today to apply, essentially, to Pollyanna Jetpack. And here's the way you do it. One, you think of a device. So maybe it's like an amazing pair of binoculars, or maybe it's like an exoskeleton that can like lift three tons, enable you to lift three tons, dig through rubble, something like that. I want you to think of a device that you would like to have soon. And then two, I want you to think about who you're going to be helping with that device. What good are you going to be doing? And then three, what training are you going to go through um, in order to be able to use that device? Um, how are you going to improve yourself? And then four, come and see me down in the lower level of the gym. I have a video camera, and I want you to tell me about that. What does the device do? Who will you help? How will you train? Okay, I'm out of time. I'm really out of time. So I want you to take away four things, right? So repeat after me. Games for good. Games for good. Games for change. Games for change. Play it before you live it. Play it before you live it. You guys are not sounding, you, know, you could be a little more enthusiastic, I think. <laughs> there we go. And play Pollyanna Jetpack. All right, much better. Thank you so much. <laughs>